ஹலோ எவ்ரி ஒன் ஐ எம் வித்யானி சூரிய தேவரா ஐம் என் இன்ஸ்ட்ரக்டர் இன் த டிபார்ட்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் ரேடியாலஜி அட் ஸ்டாட்ஃபர்ட் அண்ட் வி பீன் பார்ட் ஆஃப் த செனட் கன்சார்ஷியம் மோஸ்ட்லி பார்ட் ஆஃப் த டெக்னாலஜி டெவலப்மெண்ட் டீம் வி ஆர் டெவலப்பிங் எ நியூ இமேஜிங் டூல் டு டிடெக்ட் சனசன்ஸ் இன் ஆஸ்ட்ரியா ஆர்த்ரைட்டர்ஸ் வி ஹவ் டெவலப்ட் ரேடியோ ட்ரைசா அண்ட் நாவ் வி ஆர் டெவலப்பிங் இன் எம்ஆர்ஐ கான்ட்ரஸ்ட் ஏஜென்ட் டு பி ஏபிள் டு டிடெக்ட் சனசன்ஸ் இன் நீ ஆஸ் வெல் அஸ் ஆங்கிள் ஆஸ்ட்ரியா ஆர்த்ரைட்டர்ஸ் I am uh, Nicola Nareddy. I am an associate professor in the Department of Molecular Biology, Cell Biology and Biochemistry at Brown University. Um, I am one of the PIs of a technology development application within SENNET. And uh, our role is to develop technologies that combine spatial transcriptomics and spatial epigenomics and spatial uh, imaging of uh, the 3D structure of the genome. to study in tissues senescent cells identify them and characterize them from the point of view of their uh, epigenome how did you start in the field of senescence research so when i moved to stanford 2 years ago i was part of dr hiker darlip link's team and this team was already funded by the senate consortium and given my background in osteoarthritis research um, like i was then i got into this a uh, senate consortium where we were investigating senescence imaging tools in osteoarthritis and it has been a great experience to work with all the collaborators within the senate consortium across the us as part of the biomarkers working group and the bi yearly the senate meetings that where we all meet uh for me it goes back uh, a while ago uh I was always interested in uh, the biology of aging and uh, we have a center for the biology of aging here at Brown University and uh, I have a very close collaborator uh, John Sedevi who was one of the people that was at the forefront of the study of senescent cells and through my collaboration with him I became more and more interested in the topic um I brought in uh, the omics part um and the computational Uh, analysis of data sets and that's how i became more and more involved and uh this new revolution with the spatial omics uh, dragged me into the field uh, that uh, is now at, at the forefront of sennet what is the role of the biomarkers working group within sennet so the biomarker working groups um was created um at the beginning of sennet based on a widespread uh, request from many of the members uh i remember that one of the first questions that was discussed in the initial senate meetings is uh, um how do we define senescent cells uh and the corollary to that is well what are the markers that define senescent cells and so the senate uh, created this biomarkers working group and uh, i started to be the chair uh, at the beginning of the working group trying to organize um an effort in which uh, we wanted to bring together expertise from the field within sennet and also based on uh publications that were available to try to see what was um the set of markers uh that define senescent cells and immediately we realized that this was a much more complex question then uh we had expected at the beginning and uh the effort within the biomarkers working group is really to uh, define what are these markers how to measure them and how specific these markers are based on different tissues and different cell types how did the idea for this review article originate and what was its primary goal during the senate fall meeting in 2022 when we first presented our work to the senate consortium ours is a beta galactosidase based radio tracer that we are using to detect senescence in osteoarthritis we got questions from the other members of the senate uh, community that we have we could look at even other biomarkers for senescence and then when we asked them what other biomarkers uh, would they recommend for us to validate this probe we did, got mixed answers and that's when i realized there needs to be a, a consensus within the community and we need to agree for common biomarkers and that's when uh, nicola also was forming the biomarkers working group and that's how we came up with the idea that we need to have an expert recommendation paper on the biomarkers for senescence which the whole field would could then follow up on in the future research 
How was the writing process organized for this review article, and how long did it take to complete? In the Senate consortium, we had experts for each particular organ. Some of them were working on liver, some of them were working on brain and bones. So uh, we reached out to the experts in the field and they organ and then we asked them to contribute to that particular tissue section. So we had about 12 tissue sections in total, and they also worked with their uh postdocs and the scholars and they all we had one team lead who kind of took care of each tissue section and got back to us and it took about I think six to nine months to kind of have the first version of the manuscript ready for submission and then it took almost a year from there until the final acceptance and when the paper was online. What is the expected impact of this review article on the senescence field and what are the main themes discussed? So as Vidyani mentioned, um, the uh, unique uh, uh, aspect of uh, working with Instant.net is the availability of uh, experts, not only in senescence, but in specific tissues and uh, diseases. And so that's what I think the strength of this uh, um, article is, is really bringing in the perspective of uh, what are the specific uh, markers that have been identified in different tissues um, and in different diseases? Uh, so going back to a little bit of the history of this uh, uh, review, um, it, it was initially thought as really like a, a compendium of uh, biomarkers that are tissue specific. And uh, we we um, try to uh, engage different uh, um, editors and see their, you know, if they were interested in this uh, article or this, this type of, uh, of work. And uh, Nature Reviews uh, Molecular Cell Biology came up with the idea of why don't you write something in the format of an expert recommendation, which was a new format that they, they had. And I think that fit very well with the type of message that we wanted to send out to the community, which is uh, based on what's known right now, based on experts that have been working in these different tissues for a long time, um, what is uh, the best list of markers that are um, to be used uh, in identif when identifying and characterizing senescent cells in different tissues. Uh, and then it kind of grew from there. So from just the list of different tissues, um, that we decided that it was also important to um, communicate to uh, the field what are the uh, methodologies that are used right now to identify um, these uh, um, uh, markers and these senescent cells. And so we also have uh, parts of these uh, uh, review that talk about the latest uh, uh, AI and machine learning methodologies that are used to define um, signatures of senescence. So one of the messages that is in this uh, article is that a single biomarker uh, does not exist. You cannot rely on an individual one. You have to rely on a panel. Uh, another uh, important message that we have in this uh, uh, article is that you should require evidence of multiple hallmarks of senescence. So we describe in the article what are the typical hallmarks of senescence. Uh, and we say that in order to fully characterize a cell as senescence, you need to have evidence of uh, more than one of these. They manifest themselves in different ways, in different cell types and different tissues. And that's why it's important to have a panel of potential markers that you study. And these new techniques, we talk about these new techniques that are um, available right now for spatial uh, multiomics, and uh, we recommend ways of, of using them. So th this, these are kind of the messages that uh, we want to um, send out. And Vidyani also can tell you a little bit about what else we added to to the uh, article that I think is important for the field? Yeah, aging has been a growing field of interest around the world, and especially uh, for even for new scientists getting into the senescence research. I think this paper clearly structures what is senescence and the different hallmarks of senescence, as Nicola mentioned. And most importantly, it also defines tissue-specific biomarkers, multiple biomarkers that one could use to validate uh, their research projects and all the new technologies available to detect senescence at the cellular and tissue level. And um, having this 
our expert recommendation for uh, biomarkers is actually not only good for the new researchers in the field but also for the already existing experts because it also lists new technologies and new methodologies as well as AI tools as Nicola has mentioned. Are there tools and resources that have been developed in the process of writing this review article? So I remember early on within the biomarkers working group, um, we were trying to uh, talk about how do we organize the knowledge of biomarkers uh, that is out there already and how do we internally uh, can recommend which antibodies, which genes uh, uh, to to test in, in the different assays. And one other thing we started to do is to create an Excel spreadsheet with some information that was already available uh, using you know literature that, that was uh, has been published in, in the past 10, 15 years. And uh, I think Jonathan Silverstein from the codec was uh, the person that came up with the idea is, well, this is already a very good structure for potentially a review article. Um, so that that's when we started talking about potentially submitting a review article. But beyond that, we kept going with this organization in terms of a, a database. This was actually one of the biggest effort in creating this um, article. It's not just the written part. Uh, each single um, group that uh, was working on an individual tissue, and there's 14 tissues that total that are covered for both mice and human um, data, and um, um, each one of these tissues uh, um, uh, groups submitted a list of curated markers um, that have been identified as important to studies in essence cells in literature, uh, together with the type of techniques that were used uh, when studying these markers in these tissues. Uh, we collected all of this into a database that is currently uh, available. It's part of the supplementary material for this uh, uh, publication, but it's also on the Kodak website within SenNet. Uh, and on top of that, there is also a visualization that can uh, be um, uh, accessed uh, by anybody within or outside the consortium to browse this uh, database. So this, this I think, is, a, is an important resource that uh, um, the field now has. And um, it's, it's something that we're really proud of. And it was a, a big effort uh, beyond just the writing of the, of, of the manuscript. Yeah, and in the process of compiling this Excel sheet, we also found out that some tissues are more well studied than other tissues for senescence. And there's definitely scope for uh, researchers working in that particular organ to study cellular senescence in that area. And in the next two to three years, we're hoping to update the Excel sheet and also have a visualization of senescence biomarkers across all the other tissues, especially I think intestine and colon could be more studied. What's next for the Senate Biomarkers Working Group? I think that what's next is really what is being done right now, because we started this process about a, a, year, and a year and a half ago. Um, most of the effort was on collecting information from publications that were already uh, available and existing. And what's next is all the new uh, studies uh, within CENNET and, and you know, in the whole field, but particularly within CENNET, uh, are focused on uh, making progress in identifying biomarkers and identifying senescence using these new techniques that are omics techniques and identifying uh, what are the markers that are important to uh, characterize in essence cells and their heterogeneity. So I think what's next is uh, we hope that in a couple of years, we will be able to start the process of writing an update um, that is based on the progress that we uh, make within SenNet. Uh, in fact, as, as Vidyani mentioned, this database that we're talking about uh, is uh, for us a live database that will be updated regularly on a yearly basis. And we're working on that within the uh, biomarkers working group on setting up you know, a way to update it, uh, uh, the, the database so that it can be um, uh, something that uh, uh, people can rely on when they have to set up new studies. They can refer to the database and see what are the latest uh, markers and how people have used those markers in those tissues. So um, in terms of what's next, it's more 
from the new knowledge that uh, Sennet uh, will will bring to the table based on uh, its uh, uh, group of experts um, that are working in this field. And uh, hopefully we're, there will be a phase two. So we want this to be a long-term project. And I'm also hoping that we'll have circulating biomarkers for senescence where we'll be able to detect these biomarkers in the blood or plasma. I can add to that. Yes, that's... Um, we, within uh, the uh, biomarkers working group, we have identified uh, new areas of interest uh, for the next uh, few years. And uh, circulating biomarkers is one of the top because of uh, its potential translational uh, application. Um, and uh, we have a little bit of that already uh, highlighted within the um, uh, review article, uh, but that's just the beginning. And uh, I think it has a lot of potential for the future. What would you tell students and junior investigators who want to research senescence? It's a very exciting time for um, people that are interested in, in senescence. Um, there, is a there are a lot of opportunities um, from the point of view of basic research and, uh, and, and translation of research. Uh, and so I would say don't be afraid to reach out to one of the many labs that work in this field. Um, and, uh, and and find your, your space within it. But uh, I would say this is the right time to, to do it. Um, also, uh, the literature is very extensive um, and uh, don't be afraid about it because uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's something that uh, um, I remember the, the, the first uh, few years when I got into senescence and my background is actually very different from that. Um, I, I come more from a computational background. I was a little bit intimidated, but uh, it's it's a pretty mature uh, field right now in terms of uh, um, what people um, ha have done. And so, um, d don't be be afraid of diving into um, you know the literature that is 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 being pretty well curated right now. And there's a lot of uh, scope in the senescence research, not just understanding at the cellular level and the mechanistic level what is senescence, but also scope to develop new technologies to detect senescence and also being able to use all the AI tools and being able to deliver, uh, like fine tune them to be able to be used in senescence research. So there's this field is kind of open for any kind of expertise. So if anyone is interested in, in, in aging research, I think, as Nicola mentioned, this is the right time. And especially within the Senate Consortium, we have um, a great team of experts who are not just very accomplished in the fields, but very humble and very open to mentor new trainees and give opportunities to them. And this uh, review paper is a great example of it because we... Uh, we're uh, very particular that we not only have experts writing uh, each particular tissue section, but also give the, an opportunity to the trainees within the teams to be able to contribute to the review paper. So I think for all the new graduate students or postdocs, I think it's a great time to be in this field. And it's just about finding the right mentors and uh, getting yourself into citizens and contributing to healthy aging in the future. If I can just add one thing that uh, um, goes off of what uh, Vidiani said, um, when we started within Sennet, there were essentially um, uh, two uh, kind of labs, labs that were really expert in certain tissues and certain technologies and uh, uh, were new to senescent, to the senescent field, and people that were mostly in the senescent field come in. And one of the comments I kept hearing from the people that uh, uh, joined the Sennet uh, um, from a, a field that is, was different from senescence is how welcoming the senescent field was. They, they, they were all very uh, happy about that. And so I would say even as a trainee, as a, as a student or as a postdoc, uh, I think you, you would probably feel this and... Uh, the excitement and also the the uh, opportunity to get trained in one of these uh, labs right now. It, it, it's very timely. And I should also give a special mention to our NH program officers within the Senate Consortium who are like very encouraging for the new trainees, but also they're asking hard questions to actually push the field forward. <laughs>